uh, let's go here. Let's go here this morning. Kane Sabia then this morning. Cavaquinho is a small Portuguese string instrument in the European guitar family. How about that? With four wires or gut strings, I guess in its traditional form uh, would be gut. Um, a Cavaquinho player is called a Cavaquista. I'm sure this is part of the Fado repertoire or lineup. We'll find out if it is or not from Ensemble Iberica, our new friends joining us in just a moment. Different forms of Cavaquinho have evolved in different regions. And I'll put the pick of it on the screen as well so you can see what we're talking about here. Varieties used outside of Iberia are found in Brazil, where we go, of course, at 10 o'clock this morning, talking to Simone and her book about Brazil, her native Brazil. Cap Verde and Madeira. And then finally on this subject... Um, oh, sorry, loads more comments have come in and have helped me lose my place. Here we go. Uh, the Caribbean Cuatro, which is popular in Puerto Rico, and the Hawaiian ukulele were both derived and adapted from the Portuguese cavaquinho. Would I had no idea. Portugal's influence around the world continues with this wonderful cane sabia this morning and the wonderful inventions from Portugal that we uh, found out about beginning last week and continuing into this week as well. Let's give them a nice big round of applause because they're about to join us now onto the screen. Uh, that, was a really, that was a really nice entry for you. Bo and Erin, sorry, you're hidden behind a cockerel there, Erin. Let me just move over. <laughs> but, uh, we can't have that happening in this morning. Bo, Erin, how are you? Good to see you this morning. Very good. Thanks for having us on the show. Bon it's dia. an absolute pleasure. Bon dia to you as well, Bo. So what's going on? Tell us about Ensemble Iberica. You're in the country, right? Yes, we're in Porto right now, having a wonderful time. Um, we've got a group of patrons with us. Uh, so Bo can tell you a little bit more about how this whole project started, but we are currently in Porto with a group of music lovers uh, that we've brought over from the United States, and we bring them to Portugal to experience some of the Fado music and your wonderful wine and food and just enjoy the culture. I love it. You made it sound like it's my wonderful wine. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what, wait, aren't, you, aren't you paying us in wine? Wasn't that the deal? Uh, yes, so, uh, my people will talk to your people about that. Be de I'd be delighted to, because it's quite a good value as well, isn't it, of course, the Portuguese wine. Well, I'm so pleased you're having a great time. Uh, lovely to see an organisation that celebrates the Iberian connection, which I don't think is that common, is it? It's like Spain or Portugal, and maybe a little bit of Andorra sometimes, and a, that tiny bit of France too. But um, how is it then that you have this organisation that uses the um, Iberian tag? That's one for you, is it, Bo? Uh, yes. So this this project started about 12 years ago. I came over here with two other musicians, a jazz singer and a jazz guitarist. And we were awarded a grant through the uh, Linda Lighton Foundation. And we stayed in residency in Alfama in, uh, in, in Lisboa for two months just to learn how to play Fado. Wow. And, it was absolutely the adventure of a lifetime. Yeah. And uh, when we came back, we decided to incorporate the ensemble as a 501c3 and make it a bigger umbrella of Spanish music, Portuguese music, and really all of the whole diaspora, all of their former colonies. It's not time specific, but we do uh, at least once a season uh, present bottle music or something with a, a Luso connection. Love it. I Iberian, Luso connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular tour then, and these lucky uh, patrons are of, it's a charity basically, is, is your structure, right? People, people can be part of this and support what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely. We are 501c3 and in, in that's a US term for, for a, a charitable not-for-profit. So yeah. um, in addition to the concert series that we present, we also have an educational, uh, an educational arm and um, we also do a lot of charitable work. So that's fantastic. So, and that and, and that means that the patrons can occasionally get to basically tour with you and and, and really because it's not every charity that you give to you can't always get this level of experience, can you? I mean, they're so what 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 are they experiencing? What are they doing with you at the moment? Yeah, well, we've had we had a wonderful time in Lisboa, so we saw many photo shows, and of course, ate a lot of great food. And now here in Porto. Um, we went to the Douro River Valley yesterday, and they got to experience that. Um, and then tonight we saw, oh, well, actually, was it two nights ago? We saw the Fado concert um, of some new Fado voices in, in from Porto, which was terrific. And then tonight we're having another Fado concert. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, 
And are you getting to play as well, Bo, on this tour? Oh, yes. And uh, it's a great chance for people that are our patrons to meet some of our artists as co-hosts. Yeah. So our, prin our principal co-host this trip, and usually every year, is Rodrigo Costa Felix. And he's one of the greatest singers of his generation. But wow. he introduced us to some new up-and-coming singers in their early 20s. And this has totally rewritten the trip. So yes. we also <laughs> meet artists and break. He's, he's coming to Kansas City for sure. Oh, wonderful! So, uh, these, yeah, there's a uh, that. That's really the best thing about these is 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 access to the artists, having mm -hmm. cultural context and seeing where they live, where they work, and how they make music. Um, I, we think it's a very informative uh, process for the aficionados and the listeners and the, and our donors. That is truly yeah. amazing. Sorry, go yeah. on, go on, Eric. It's it's more like I, I like to think of it like a community, <clears throat> like we're we're building a community of people that have interest in this, in this music. And it just yeah. enriches the whole experience to be able to see it in contextually. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this music, this region, can you tell me a little bit more about how you see that? Cause my, my understanding is that, you know, the, the Iberian Peninsula is mainly Portugal and Spain. And of course there is that part of Andorra and a little bit of France as well, but you also have a connection with Turkey, don't you? And mm -hmm. possibly other countries as well. How, how, how is Iberia, um, working for you as a, as a concept, and, and, and what can you tell us about that? Well, probably around the uh, the pandemic times, and we also have a new cellist that is Turkish. Definitely, what I would call mission drift started occurring, <laughs> and, and that that umbrella just wasn't big enough. You know? Right. So uh, we have been studying the connection of Galicia and Ireland for a long time. It's okay. A very obvious musical sound and pulling at that thread. So we have been doing research and patron trips to Ireland recently. And we'll most likely be in Galicia for some research in uh, uh, October. Wonderful. But uh, yeah, Turkey on the other side of the Mediterranean. But we've been presenting a lot of Turkish music these last couple of years, mainly because of our cellist, Eski. OK. Yeah. And speaking, uh, and speaking oh, of Ireland, we are doing another uh, patron trip to Ireland in April of 2024, and we've just opened that up. So if people are interested in perhaps joining us, we went to Ireland for the first time this year, and it was absolutely incredible, and mm -hmm. we'll be back again next spring. So if people are interested, they could check the website and um, come with us. It's, That's it's really awesome. unfair. That's really unfair, and to say we're <laughs> going to Ireland, would anyone like to join us? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> 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 uh, they, they, there's how to get involved on sambaiberica.org. Uh, I want to talk to you more about this musical connection, though, because yeah, Turkey's come into the picture now. You're going to Spain, you're going to Ireland, and there's just something so powerful about this um, kind of music, isn't there? That tells the stories of the past and is so full of yearning. And um, mm. how how is it that how how are the traditional Fado representatives here? Um, responding to your passion for the music. Uh, uh, they must be quite uh, flattered and, and delighted that, that, that as far away as America, people are celebrating this kind of music. Well, when we first came 12 years ago, uh, I had assumed that there would be other foreigners learning Fado. Right. And uh, uh, we ended up being uh, sort of have, having the power of first. So... Uh, <laughs> Lots of people wanted to meet us. We were wined and dined by politicians and uh, people in the arts community. And we met a lot of great people very, very quickly. Uh, we were uh, on the cover of the Noticias magazine wow. and uh, made many TV appearances. It was just very unusual. Yeah. So we got a lot of gas out of that for uh, a few years. Um, I see but yeah, it's... I, I would be surprised strange. as well. You you would think there was a celebration of Fado all over the world, but that, so that was a really pleasant surprise. And as you say, turbocharged your experience of being here those years ago. Yeah, you know, when you go to Spain to study flamenco, there's other foreigners doing it, and or yeah. tango yeah. and Argentina, uh, and this was just something very unusual. And they didn't really have anything in place to learn. You just have to learn it in the Fado houses. Oh, it's right. an oral tradition and. There's no one that you can just go up to and get, oh, I need Portuguese guitar lessons. You know, it, it's, it's <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, we quickly found out it was just something you had to learn by rote in, in its context. 
Right. It's like some of the Indian music traditions. You can't you can't just get a book. You have to go and be with the masters of the music and and get to grips with it and and and, do, and learn your stuff. Oh yeah, and so much of it is the photo house. It's the it's the context of where it's supposed to be performed. Okay, so on that note, pardon the pun. Um, could you could you give us a little bit of help there for people who are thinking? I don't. I really. I I think I like it. I, I definitely know I would like to try. Uh, Going to a father house is it as easy as that? Do you just do you, do you just look it up in your kind of uh, Time Out magazine of your local Portuguese town and pop along there? What would you what would be your beginner's guide to father music or Iberian music? Well, people write me with this question often, yeah. and I just give them a short list of my very favorite photo houses where I learned. Uh -huh. Of course, I have very strong biases in in, in my taste and what I like. Yes. But uh, he has excellent yeah. taste, by the way. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, first of all, they need to know uh, the etiquette of the photo house. Oh, go on. Um, What's that? What, what is that? It's a wonderful way of performing music. I absolutely love it. Um, any good photo houses, the lights come down to where you can barely see. Yeah. And that's your cue for everyone to be absolutely quiet. I mean, not a whisper anything and they're always playing acoustically there's no amplification oftentimes it's right in front of the front door so no one can really come in the door shuts yeah, door shuts <laughs> that's, quite a, that's quite a moment isn't it yeah. <laughs> you hear the door locking <laughs> <laughs> so uh uh you know there's usually four to five fathers um performed and you know everyone can behave themselves for 20 minutes right well, I don't know about this community, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a go. So that's that's important then. You don't want to be sort of chatting and getting your phone out with the flash on and taking pictures and, and trying to sing along. Uh, <laughs> well, there are some songs that are meant to be sung along with. Right. And you, they always welcome uh, video cameras, so just no flash. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's over and you're... Uh, completely free to party and talk for 20, 30 minutes, then the lights will go down and this will happen till, you know, 3 a.m. Or, or, or as long wow. as people are in the photo house. And usually there's um, one person who is sort of the designated um, a, a person for that evening. So maybe Rodrigo may be singing two, two or three <laughs> sets. And then you may have other people come in. It Every night is different. That's what I love about it is the discovery of it. Uh -huh. So you might say, well, Rodrigo is singing tonight at, uh, you know, Mesa, but then you don't know who else might show up. There might be a master who shows up. There might be a young singer. There might be um, a grandmother from the neighborhood who comes in and sings a song. Uh, you just never know. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And I love that the music is um, sung by and belongs to the community. I really like that. Yeah. And it's truly live then in every sense, live performance, but live as in alive in the community. And you're not you're, like in many folk traditions, I suppose you're not going to like you say, not going to know who's going to turn up and how the evening is going to go. And there's an electricity about that as well, isn't there? And this looks like it's changed both your lives um, getting involved in Iberian music. Uh, certainly yours, Bo, from that, those, um, you know, fifth, was it 14, 15 years ago when you first came and, and this, this plot twist occurred for you musically. How does it go down then? I mean, for me, Carnegie Hall sounds like the most incredible venue to play in. It's just, it's just it, from when you're an English kid, it's like what you hear in the movies or even superhero movies. I went to see a Spider-Man last night. And Carnegie Hall, you know, you just you hear it as an iconic performance venue. Um, you are going to great stages. How is the music received in, in North America? Well, we did play some uh, music by Carlos Paredes in, in Carnegie Hall, and I played wow. the Portuguese guitar in, in that hall. And uh, I don't know if that's a first, but uh, we represented his music as serious chamber music, and we made it guitar, cello, uh, Portuguese guitar arrangements of them. So uh, it's something that we're, we're presenting in different contexts rather than, than just the photo houses. The yeah. Carnegie Hall concert was... <laughs> Uh, absolutely astonishing. It was uh, really a highlight. It was one of the best concerts I've ever seen and I'm so proud of the, the whole ensemble. We brought how many folks from Kansas City? I think six, seven, six yeah. yeah. Six musicians from Kansas City, plus musicians from New York um, and California. And 
Mexico. Yeah. Oh, Mexico. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was really an incredible experience to see um, this uh, traditional music presented at such a high level and it was a sold out performance and people were, were literally cheering at the end. So oh. it, it was really quite, it's been, it's been a heck of a three weeks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're right from Carnegie Hall to Turkey to Portugal, so incredible. And so good timing with our with our um, Cane Sabia today. We're looking at Portuguese inventions and and how this Portuguese guitar. This is the smaller, I think, isn't it, of the Portuguese guitars? But how that um, bow has made its um, presence felt around the world, inspiring the Hawaiian ukulele by the sound of it. Yeah, it's it's a, a long and interesting evolution. Uh, you know, some people say it's the machete from Madeira. Uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of these instruments that are small and ukulele like that are Portuguese yes. that are from different regions. Wow. Um, Everyone's claiming it. Yeah, yeah. well, they would. They? <laughs> yeah. they would. But um, yeah, I guess uh, the story goes. In the late 1800s, uh, there were a few Portuguese men that were cabinet makers that brought some of these instruments with them and uh, founded that tradition in Hawaii. Amazing. Um, but it's an incredible story. We actually, one of our patrons was a, a, a Polynesian man from Hawaii named Moses. And we took him to a store in Oporto that specializes in cavaquinhos and spent the whole afternoon there. And it was, <laughs> you know, this is his life and it was yeah. really illuminating for him to just get his hands on everything that points to that instrument uh for real you know to to, to play them tune them up so, try them out beautiful that's, that sent a little chill down my spine that's so wonderful uh t duck who brought us that cane so this morning to, talking to us about the cover king yesterday i love college but listening to him right now see they say men can't multitask but t-duck is watching the show enjoying what you're saying and he's got some carlos paredes going on in the background as well thank you so much for being here um I'm, i must make sure that people know exactly where to find you um at ensembleiberica.org uh, and that's how they can stay in touch presumably subscribe to a newsletter um, maybe get involved with you as a charity to support the work that you're doing are, are the performances that are going on on this particular tour, are they patron only? Can people come and meet you? Or are they open to the public at the moment? No. Nope. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got a, we've got a private concert. And that's part of what's so great that's about course, these patron trips is that you we curate experiences that that are really designed for our patrons and, and yeah. unique one-of-a-kind concerts. So we're going to have one tonight. Um, uh, that's been curated for us and, and a private concert and a dinner. But if you'd like to join us, yes. uh, you can go on our website and there's a thing that says patron trips and it's a little drop down box and you'll see, you just keep watching those. We will um, populate those. The one that's up right now is for Ireland in the spring. And uh, we'd love to have some people come join us and talk about that, how that, you know, thread leads back. It's how very lovely. interesting. Please, um, whenever you're back in Europe, do get in touch and, and, and to join us on. It's nice and easy doing this, isn't it? And we and so please do that when you're back in Europe and or even from from the States, of course. And we have to thank our mutual friend, Andy Klein, for making this happen as well. So good morning to you, Andy, who I think mm -hmm. is uh, enjoying touring with you and is in Porto at the moment. So enjoy the rest of your tour. Thank you so much for make, getting up early. I know for musicians, this is not an easy gig, is it, first thing in the morning? So <laughs> Bo especially. Thank you very much. Awesome some groaning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we made it, though. We did it. You thank, so you did. So, thank you so much for having us on the show. It's delightful to meet you. That's it. And you, equal mind, and have a, enjoy the rest of your tour. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care. Bye for now. Have a good one. Next time. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> oh, there they go. So Bo and Erin there of Ensemble Iberica. And we've made James a little bit late, but I'm sure he won't mind because I think he'll have enjoyed that. Um, but we can't say hello to him, of course, until we've played his music. There's a little bit of guitar going on in this, isn't there? And his wonderful intro tune. We'll see him right after this. <laughs> 